Council for Scientific and Industrial Research will host its eighth uh, biennial Biennial conference, I beg your pardon, today. The event will see industry players discuss research, development and innovation and what role they can play in growing the South African economy. In the past, funds have been pumped into various projects in science and technology in order to address challenges facing this country. But how far have we actually come? Let's take stock of this for you now. Bring in the science and technology minister. That's Dr. Blade in Zamande with us now via our video link this morning. Bob in Zamande, great to see you. Thanks very much indeed for making time to speak to us. So as I mentioned, money being spent in order to ensure that what academics are doing in labs translates at least into economic growth in this country. How well are we doing insofar as that is concerned, especially because in the past there had been real concerns that academics postulate for the sake of research without any of that really translating into improving the material conditions of people in this country? Good morning to yourself and, and your, your viewers and listeners. Uh, thanks for inviting me. I think that first the main thing that I'd just like to say you know, is that the importance of this conference is precisely aimed at addressing what you are talking about, which is how do we ensure that as much of our research that gets done gets actually translated into a product that is able to make a contribution, especially in the development of our economy. The focus of this conference, for instance, is precisely uh, on... <clears throat> how we use science, technology, and innovation to support uh, our economy. It is indeed very important in the task of my department that we increase investment uh, in of the percentage of GDP, gross domestic product, into science, technology, and innovation. At the moment, we are standing at 0.7%, which is rather low, mm. and we are aiming that by 2025, at least we should reach 1.1% and by 2030, 1.5% spend on our GDP on, on science, uh, technology and, and innovation. Yeah. This conference of the CSIR, therefore, is very important because it brings together a number of scientists, both who are working at the CSIR and those who are working at universities, some of them in the private sector, to actually share knowledge on what is being done to harness science, technology, and innovation behind economic development broadly in our country and specifically industrial development. Yeah. I wonder, Minister, how much of those talks will also feature discussions around making what academics put together more accessible. There had been a long-standing critique, for instance, that academic text is so dense, it almost feels like ed academics are writing for each other, as opposed to sometimes writing for the people whom they study. It's something you must have heard, and I wonder to what extent, as a minister, you reckon we should finally start pressurizing academics to make sense to laymen like you and me, or at least me and Michelle, for argument's sake. Yes, that is a very important matter. That is why my Department of Science and Innovation has got very important programs in that regard. The first one is that we've got what we call science outreach, where we reach out to schools in particular, but we also reach out to communities to understand better the role of science and all that. The one very recent example is what we did with COVID-19, you know, because the explanation around COVID-19 and the need for the population to protect itself mm. was actually translating very complex scientifically developed knowledge and translated into the language that can be understood by ordinary people. Of course, we still have a long way to go. I, my, one of my commitments, for instance, is to promote what I call science literacy so that ordinary people can understand the role of science, the achievements of science, and sometimes to challenge societal stereotypes that could actually undermine the spreading of scientific knowledge uh, in, in, in society. That is one of the biggest challenges and the things that we are undertaking as the Department uh, of Science and Innovation. I also want to add, by the way, that we are just not also all over the place. As a department, for instance, we have got priority areas that we want to focus on. That will make a practical difference to people, which would also help them to understand science. For instance, we are doing a lot of work in, de in development research 
into development of alternative sources of energy. Yeah. We have a crisis now. We've been relying on coal-generated electricity. We need to be moving away from that as much as is possible and actually getting into renewable forms of energy, whilst at the same time, by the way, ensuring that we do not have job losses and that we are able to transition smoothly without leaving people behind, without losing jobs and so on. We are also doing a lot of research, which is also going to be discussed by the CSIR, for instance, on water conservation. We are a water scarce country. How do we develop technologies to be able to use our water uh, in a better way? The CSIR, for instance, has been doing things like it developed two years ago a test for COVID, which was South African developed. You know, that is very important that those kinds of innovations, then we are able to explain to people, to understand them simply. You understand it simply now with experience what a COVID test is. Mm. And that's one way of explaining that without science, we would not actually have been able to develop this. So the easier way to explain science is not just to talk about it, but to also explain how science is changing our lives sure. on a daily basis. Speaking about that, Minister, you know, I, I do wonder to what extent there will be involvement from other government departments in what's taking place today, uh, because... In the past, for instance, there have been concerns about how informed by science and empirical evidence some decisions we make even at municipal level are. You know, for instance, it, to what extent really are our government officials making their decisions about how to run municipalities based on science? Because we do okay. have <clears throat> some of the most leading you know, um, scientists and academics in the world working in this country. And in some instances, many of them f simply feel unheard. Well, I'm very pleased that you are actually raising that, you know, because firstly, let me just tell you, we've got another big scientific event tomorrow, which we are launching in Hermanas, which is the only space weather center in the whole of the African continent, which we've built here in South Africa. It's now going to be used by the international aviation uh, industry. That is just the, the nature and extent of the contribution you know, that our country has made. But that would also involve the Department of Transport, by the way, by way of example. But I'm also pleased to say that the president has recently set up an interministerial committee, which he has actually asked me to chair, where a number of departments that we regard as science-intensive are working together. Department of Water and Sanitation, for instance. Department of uh, Cocta, you know, uh, because Cocta in particular in dealing with regions and provinces. We are doing, CSIR is doing a lot of work, for instance, on the disasters that we are having now, the natural disasters in yeah. particular, how to deal with those. So that interministerial committee, interestingly enough, is meeting on Friday morning in its second meeting since it was actually set up to take forward, amongst other things, which is very important, how do we pull together research, science, technology and innovation funds that are look and resources that are located in the different departments and use them in a much more coordinated way. We are working with the Department of Environment, for instance. We are working with the Department of Trade and Industry and Competition in relation to what the CSIR, amongst other things, will be dealing with industrialization. So as government, the president at least has taken this initiative to say, we better be able to coordinate better our own work as government and yeah. as us, myself and my department, to be able to convene that interministerial committee, which will ensure that there is coordination in the work that we are doing as government. Sure. There had been a lot of work put into developing policy around science and innovation in this country. How much of that focuses on transformation in the sector? Because like many other sectors in our country, given our history, there had also been real worries about ways through which it's intrusive enough for people who historically wouldn't have been able to be involved, at least at the level that receives the minister's attention in science and innovation. That's a very important question because historically, as you know, not only under apartheid, even post-1994, we have actually continued in some sectors to have, for instance, domination by whites, dominations by males. And to say that is not being anti-white or anti-male, but it's just to say that we need to draw 
more women, we need to draw more black people into science. We've actually done quite a lot of work in ensuring that we change that. For example, in our university system today, the majority of students who are studying engineering are black. And this happened over the the last three to four years for the first time in the history of South Africa. That lays a very strong foundation, for instance, to actually train black scientists, you know, in the engineering fields and, and so on. There are many other areas. For instance, we've got a dedicated program to women in science where we are showcasing achievements by women in order to show that women are moving forward in science, but also to encourage younger girls to actually be able to take up matters relating to science. So that is one of my priorities, and we are making some advances. Although we are not yet where we actually want to be, your scientific engineering fields are still largely in the scientific areas dominated by whites and males, and it's something that we actually are are wanting to change. It's one of the things that is my priority, but we are now producing, for instance, academics at universities for the first time in the last two years, we've reached just over 50% being women, which is actually a very important achievement on that score. All right. Science, Innovation and Technology Minister, Bladen Zamande, thanks very much indeed for your time.